Welcome to Devotionables, Brief Devotions for Busy People. This morning we'll be in Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. You know, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 2 says that it's better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting, for this is the end of all mankind, and the living will lay it to heart. But if we're honest with ourselves, I think a lot of us find it hard and a bit uncomfortable to think about death. Uh, we don't know exactly what will happen, even if we're Christians. Uh, it's still filled with some uncertainty. And especially in our culture now, filled with so many distractions, um, it's easy to not think about it at all. But the Bible says we should think about it. And actually that it's better to go to the house of mourning to think about death and contemplate uh, what our end is than even to have joy and go to a go to a party. So this morning we're going to Think about death, but think about it biblically, and we're going to look to Isaiah chapter 25 to do that. So I'll go ahead and read 25, 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all the nations, he will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Now at this time, Isaiah has just finished a progression of judgments. Uh, in chapter 23, he talks about, uh, or in chapter 22, he talks about judgment against the Israelites. Then he moves in chapter 23 to judgment against the nations, Tyre and Sidon. And then he culminates in chapter 24 with judgment against the whole earth, talking about how the whole earth will be upended. And then we take a little bit of a break, and he looks forward, and he sees in the midst of all this judgment, he sees a future where God will work salvation. Uh, for the entire world. And he sees three pictures specifically here. The first picture we see in verse 6, it's this feast of rich food. He looks forward and he sees when the Lord will provide a sumptuous meal. Uh, you'll have rich food, you'll have a bunch of substance in it, uh, you'll also have well-aged wine, so not the cheap stuff that you get at Kroger, um, but if you drink wine, the good stuff, right? Uh, this will be a bountiful feast. And think about the context in which this is. A lot of these people probably remember the hunger they felt when Jerusalem was under siege. Uh, you had massive armies coming and they were starving for, for many days and many nights. So then this picture that God doesn't have that in mind uh, for Israel's end, for the world's end, but there will be a feast provided. It's a very powerful picture. Then he moves on to this covering picture, this taking off a covering, taking off a veil. He says that he'll swallow up on this mountain, the mountain of Zion, the mountain of Jerusalem, the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. When we think about death, it is one of the only uh, certainties in our lives. And it's certain for everybody, no matter how old you are, young you are, eventually you will die. And that's exactly what he says here. It's a covering that is cast over all peoples. Everybody um, has a certain fear, a certain foreboding of death. And Hebrews talks about this when Hebrews says that Jesus himself partook of flesh and blood, that through death he might deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. That is how we are all born, lifelong slaves, because we don't know what will happen when we die. We're born with this fear of what will happen. And here, God is saying he will swallow that fear up. Uh, he will completely get rid of it. Then he moves on and he tells us, he tells us in plain language, what is he talking about? He says, he will swallow up death forever, in verse 8. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. Here we see that God's plan, God's ultimate plan, 
is that he will swallow up death forever. Swallow is a very strong word. It's not this, he will damage, he will hurt, but he will absolutely make an end to death. And it says forever. And he will wipe away tears from all faces. So in the life of Israel, where they have just seen a lot of death, they have just seen judgment, uh, here's this prophecy of peace and prophecies of salvation for them, saying that God ultimately intends to take away death from them. So what do we do with this? Uh, 21st century Christians, uh, this was written to the Jews back in Isaiah's day. What do we do with it? Well, they were looking forward. Uh, we look back and we also look forward. We look backwards to Jesus dying on the cross and rising from the dead and defeating death and the grave and our sins there uh, in the empty tomb. And then we also look forward to when God will come back and he will make everything right, and he will ultimately and finally defeat death. Death is a defeated foe, um, but he is, still, he is still mounting a defense. He's still on his way out of the door. And on that day, he will finally be kicked out forever. Uh, nobody will ever be touched by death again. So that's what we look forward to. And what we as Christians are supposed to do with this, I think, is shown in verse 9. It says, Behold, this is our God. We waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Then it says, let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. You know, sometimes the Bible gives us great uh, commandments and it goes through a long list of things and ends with, you know, do this, do this, do this. This is a very simple, uh, edible admonishment here. It just says, let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. So I want you to meditate this morning uh, on where you were once. Uh, you were once afraid of death. You once didn't know what would happen. And then you found out what would happen and it wasn't good. You were destined for hell uh, because of your sins. But then remember and meditate on the fact that Jesus died in your place and that he has swallowed up death forever and you have nothing to fear because of death.